Halving interval. So basically, if we are able to determine where two roots would lie between, we use the technique of halving interval. Okay. So in other words, if we know that um, that f of a is less than zero, okay, and f of b is greater than zero, we know there must be a root somewhere in between. Okay, for it to change between negative and positive, there must be some point where we get f of whatever the value is is equal to zero. Okay, so that's what the idea of halving the interval. Okay, so if I do exactly halfway between a and b, okay, so if I know that a is something less than zero and b is something greater than zero, and this also works the other way. All right, so if I say um, f of a is greater than zero and f of B is less than zero, same idea. We have, have to have at least one root. Okay, we're going to have multiple roots in between, okay, depending on what the values are and how many times it turns, etc. etc. But the idea is with the interval is so minor, most of the time we're only going to have the one root in between. Okay? Now if we take the midpoint of A and B and that equals zero, okay, so therefore the midpoint must be the root of the polynomial of the uh, equation of the polynomial. Okay? Now, furthermore, if I know that f of a is less than zero and f of b is greater than zero, and I'm halfway between it, so I take the average of a and b, and I know this part is less than zero. Okay, so whatever the midpoint is, and we're still below the x-axis, Therefore, the root must lie between that new midpoint and B. Okay, the idea is that you keep halving it, the better the approximation the root will be. Okay, that's the idea. So I can do it, halve it again and again to get a better approximation of what the root's going to be. Okay, so we go the other way. All right, so if I know f of A is negative and f of B is positive, and I know, I'll take the midpoint here, and that's also positive, okay? Therefore, somewhere between A and the midpoint of A plus B, okay, there's a root, because the change of sign will tell you that there is at least one root in between that domain of there, okay? So it's really halving it, and then making a better estimate of the root in there. Okay, so example, some of the questions they like to ask, then we need to show that the equation p of x there has a root in the interval between 1 and 2. Right, so they'd like asking you this, okay, so in terms of saying, show that there must be at least one root between these two numbers. Then once we have established that there is a root between the interval, we need to use the method of halving the interval. This is a technique here to find an approximation. Okay, so what am I going to do? Don't need to. Well, I'm not really just finding p of one. Find the value for p of one and then find the value for P2, show that the signs are opposite, and when I do that, that's enough to sell me that there has a, uh, there's a root between those two values. Okay, so pair of one, can be two, take away five, take away nine plus 18. Then nine, two, take away five, negative three, 18, negative three, which is, 15 for P of 1 and then P of 2. So? Got six. Sorry? Got six. Did you? Um, what have I done? Six. So it's 20 take away 14. Should be negative 12 plus. Hang on. Negative 3, negative 12 plus 18. So P of 2, 
Now that's going to give me 2 to the power of 4, take away 5 lots of 2 squared, take away 9 lots of 2, plus 18. Good, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Oh, two times two to the power of three. Yep. Now it's sufficient at this point to um, you could whack this in your calculator rather than working it out, and then show if it's going to be a negative number. Um, or when you really need to write would be we know this is less than zero. Okay, so we can show this. We know that's going to be greater than zero. You know that's going to be less than zero. All right, we can, could show that. All right, so we've got 16, um, take away 20, it's negative 4, um, plus 18, take away, oh, sorry, take away 18 plus 18. So we're going to have negative. Okay, so the y value at x equals 1 is 6, and the y value at x equals 2 is negative 4. Okay, so somewhere it changed from positive to negative. Okay, so at 1 and 2, not accurate, but we're just illustrating the idea, you've got positive 6 here and then negative 4. So the polynomial has done something, okay, and we need to uh, show that there is a, a, at least one root between there. Now because the interval is so small between 1 and 2, in most cases we are expecting only one root, but you don't just assume that there is only one root. Okay, so just be careful of your approach. There. So therefore, there is the root. In the interval Okay, so I know there's a root there, okay? Now, just because this is negative 4 and this is 6 doesn't mean that there's going to be the root closer to this absolute value distance as opposed to that absolute value distance, okay? It depends on the whole shape, okay, of your polynomial. So it might be steeper at this point here, for example, and not so steep here. That will change sort of how the, where the uh, point cuts the effects are set, Okay? So you need to use the method of halving the interval to find an approximation to the root. Okay? So what we need to do is uh, go halfway between 1 and 2. Okay, so it's going to be, um, I'll just write it the decimal. So halfway between that is 1.5. And then I need to do a P of... You guys can tell me what it is, and I'll be able to write Exactly, yeah. There you go. Half there goes, halfway between them, has the root. Okay, therefore, x is 1.5, is that good? Assuming your gap is correct, but you're not known to always have it correct in gap order. Okay, so again, show that that polynomial has a root between 0 and 1. They're probably the two best numbers to work with when substituting into the polynomial. Okay, it helps us a lot <laughs> when you've got numbers like this. Okay, then use two application. Okay, so what we need to do is halve the interval once, get the value for it, 
and then pick the correct side for us to give us a better approximate, approximation for the root. Okay, so we need to show that it has a root between 0 and 1. So P0 is 85, constant number. Okay, P1, P1 plus 11 plus 7, take away 5. I think we can safely assume that's going to be greater than zero at this point. Okay, so instead of, we don't need the exact value. Okay, so I'm just going to write a positive number. Okay, as long as you show that working, that you have considered what's going on. All right, that will be sufficient. Okay, so this is less than zero, so therefore, there is a root. Okay, so the question saying has a root, so you can assume that there is one between that interval. Uh, so zero is less than x, which is less than one. Okay, so I'm not going to include my equal sign because I know it's not going to be part, equally part of that solution there. Right, use two applications halving the interval. Okay, so we need halfway between 0 and 1. Alright, so we need to do halfway between, hit the average. Okay, when you whack that into your calculator, what do we get? Exactly or rounded? Alright, so 1.375. Alright, so if we were to consider the sketch, what we've got so far, we know that P0 is negative 5, P of 1 is something greater than 0. Alright, and then the halfway point, so 0, 0.5, we also have a positive value. Okay, so we've got something like that happening. Something. Okay, because I know this is going to be greater than zero. I also know that is going to be greater than zero. Okay, not necessarily higher per se. Right, but I know they're both on the positive y-axis direction. Alright, so I know the root therefore must be between those two points because I know P0 is negative from the starting position and my better approximation then shows me the root lies somewhere between 0.5 and zero. Right. So the question did ask us to use the two application. Right. So I've done my first estimate. So I know the root must lie between zero and 0 0.5. I there need to go do the second approximation. So halfway between zero and 0 0.5 is a quarter. Okay, dot, dot, dot.
Okay, that'll do. Now, in um, just a heads up for extension two polynomials, okay, you will uh, learn techniques to be able to find fraction uh, of your roots. So you know how we worked on whole numbers. We've learned some techniques on how to use refine the fraction. Which is actually pretty. It's actually pretty simple. All right, more we will be able in time. So negative two point five four six. All right, so we know at zero we had negative five. At 0 0.5, we had some positive value. And halfway between, we've got another negative value. Okay, so we've got something like that. Okay, so we've got negative for this side, positive for that side. So that will give me my approximation for the root. Okay, so therefore, the root lies between, not halfway, okay, between um, 0 0.25 and 0 0.5. Okay, so that's how we do it. So that's now exercise 9.1 in your text. And I'll get you your um, sheet. I'll try and get that done this morning.